what I was about to say before I went into that, what was, um, we're talking about psychics mm. when, um, when I first had Mike Cleland on, yeah. you know, his story is about like owls and UFOs, like the synchronicities of, you know, how whenever there's owl sightings, there's UFO sightings. And his theory is that, um, when people see these owls, um, what they really are as aliens sort of using some sort of, uh, some sort of like visual mind trick to making you think it's an owl. So you yeah. don't think of it as you, you don't remember you saw an alien. You have this implanted memory of seeing an owl. Um, and he, the book, his first book messengers is just basically hundreds of different accounts. Like the most famous accounts of these, these things happening, these situations happening. Uh -huh. Um, and then he, t he goes into, you know, he started telling me that he's seen multiple, he's been seeing psychics okay. his whole life. And he's like, oh yeah, I went to this psychic, I went to that psychic. I've been seeing this psychic. I did hypnotic regression here. I, I've been in hypnosis hundreds of times and starts talking about all these psychics. And I'm like, whoa, like, first of all, I am like deeply skeptical about psychics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he starts like talking about his like un unwavering belief in, in mediums and psychics. And he sort of lost me there, which is the same thing with Bigfoot. When people let, I start talking about UFOs with people. They start talking about Bigfoot. Yeah. I kind of like lose it. Yeah. You lose I think, me there. I think with psychics, what I think is, is like a lot of these things, 99.99% um, of it is, is not real. And maybe that, you know, not necessarily that the psychic is a scam artist, but that they're just, you know, saying what's coming to them mm -hmm. um, or they are scam artists, but that there's, there's like enough, there and enough evidence that 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 point zero 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 one percent let like something is going on it's like you know the are you familiar with the remote viewing phenomenon yes. those experiments a little bit yeah so that you know government program that lasted 20 years many millions of dollars put into it that had who was results. the guy the billionaire who did that uh who like put a bunch of money into that um, oh bigelow bigelow yeah, yeah yeah so he i don't know if he he did I don't know if he specifically put money into the remote viewing. He put it into the like UFO stuff. Mm -hmm. But for the remote viewing, that was just like Pentagon was it? CIA money. Okay. Yeah, and once the Freedom of Information Act, um, once they were able to get those documents through that, it painted a picture of this like whole program. And the people who ran the program at Stanford were able to write about it and have written books about it <coughs> and all of the studies that they did um, and that were presented to the military um, were laid bare and, and there was like, there's, you know, there's stuff there that, that even in their own report was like, it was statistically significant. And there were some hits that were like sort of impossible to, to describe in any other way. And so I, I do think that, especially with like psychological stuff, this, like the sigh, as they call it, that there's something there that, and it doesn't have to be like, like that it's woo woo or like magic. It's just, we don't even really understand consciousness or how consciousness works so it 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 could just be something we don't understand you know it's like a sense mm. that we have that's incredibly rare that some people can tap into sometimes yeah and you know see at a distance um and that we just you know simply don't understand what's going on there and so that i, th I think that's that is pretty interesting and and like could be real um, but that's still pretty far from like a psychic telling you about, you know, what went on in a past life or. Yeah. Yeah. You think some people are just born with just like, like say there is another like parallel dimension to uh -huh. us. Like some people are just born with a better comprehension of that. Or they can, they, they can, they can see it more than other people can, or they have better access to it. Whether right. it is just like some sort of genetic thing with their with their brain and with some something that we don't under, understand, like a genetic consciousness. Uh -huh. May maybe some are more predisposed to it, but with the whole remote viewing program that the government was funding, the point of that one was was that they could teach anyone to do it. Mm, okay, and that so they would just teach people that didn't seem to have any ability, um, and that was the point of it was that they could train what they called the psychic spies too. 
to like it was all to like spy on Russia, right? You know, <laughs> during the Cold War, and then the Cold uh, War ended. They're like, well, we don't need psychic spies anymore, right. and we also have you know satellites, <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, that are better at it. So, um, well, how many do you, how many people successfully did re- like were able to do remote viewing? I wonder. Oh, it was it was a it was an all right number. There was like you know a handful that were really good at it. Like that like consistently pretty good, but I'll, I'll, um, there's a great book just called mind reach mind reach. Yeah. That's, that is like sort of details the program and the guy who, one of the guys who ran it, he lives in Austin, Texas. Really? Now. Yeah. So I want to try and he's like, again, another guy who's like 90 who yeah. <laughs> I need to try and get before he dude, dies. these, like <clears throat> these, these films that you make. They had like so long to, yeah. to make, like yeah. especially with like David Huggins. Uh-huh. You said three years were filming yeah, yeah. with him. I have similar experience doing stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, before I started this, I was do- I did a lot of like similar ty- types of like docu series stuff, uh-huh. and and my experience with it is like just like you explained, like the first time you visit, like the first time I visited uh, this one group of local fishermen around here. I did a similar documentary about commercial fishing, mm-hmm. um, and like the the people. Um, like the lowest level, like the deckhands. And we met with the first guy and it was like, holy shit, we just like discovered another universe. <laughs> you know, we're going to go down this rabbit hole and we uh-huh. filmed for, we filmed it for like six months. And then I sat on all that footage for like f- three years mm-hmm. before I even touched anything, yeah. started editing anything. Cause it was just such a daunting idea to edit and package all of that shit. Yeah. And eventually I don't know what it was, but I just like sat down and started going through it. And then once I got like a certain percentage cut, I was like, okay, now I can start like taking bites of this thing yeah. and eating the whole thing. You yeah. Know like I, mean? I, I sat on the Huggins, my first Huggins footage for, for like four years. Really? I didn't touch it. I didn't look at it. I was just like, I can't, like I just can't motivate myself. I don't think it's going to be good mm-hmm. um, until I finally like I cut just like a little thing out of it to show people, and then that was the motivation to yeah to get into it. Like cut a little teaser and yeah. show people get the like the real world excitement exactly and it make it, it sort of makes it real. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean, put some music to it and yeah. then it's like okay, now I'm going to do it. And that's For- yeah, that's basically also what I learned from because I worked in ad world too. Yeah, before this and still kind of do. Um, and that was like a good skill to learn is like packaging something and making a thing that people will actually watch without turning away. Mm -hmm. Did you, now when you, uh, when you come up with these ideas to film guys like this, Mm -hmm. did you just sort of like have the idea and you want to like fund it yourself until you can sort of like figure out how someone else can help you fund it and make it better? Or do you just want to put it out on the internet and just see what happens. Yeah, it, it depends. Um, the great thing about docs, making docs is like you can just start. Um, it's always good to, you know, plan and think first, but you can, you can just, I can just go with the camera and audio. It's not going to be great as good as it can be, but I can do something mm-hmm. that, that I like with the D's thing that like we can put online and, um, you know, I didn't wait for any funding for that one or, or anything, but then it did lead to, you know, interest in doing like a, mm-hmm. a bigger project out of that. So, um, with the series, with the, like the folklore series, yeah, we shot that Mount Shasta thing as a little proof of concept. Same with the cryptozoologist stuff. I think you, you just sort of have to start because, um, similar, like with the ad world, like people aren't going to get behind something unless they can already just see it and see at least a part of it, you know? And, and especially now, um, you have to show people exactly what it's going to look and feel like before you actually...